This is the beginning of what turned out to be a memorable afternoon for many people who were there. It was a Sunday, December 14th. Buckminster Fuller, one of the original thinkers of our time, was returning to his old neighborhood in the Lincoln Park community. Uh, he was that afternoon, a bit later after the conversation in the station wagon, which you're about to hear, was to talk to some of the young lords and their friends and neighbors in the church, the now known as the People's Church on Dayton and Armitage. But of that, a bit later. We're in the station wagon now. Several people are in it with Bucky Fuller. He's up front near the driver, and he's listening as young architect, uh, young people in the community, Chacha Jimenez, chairman of the Young Lords, a variety are offering him information about the area, and he's commenting uh, back and forth in a rather informal fashion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something for me, Don. Count of my hearing aids, which are just amplifiers. I, I get all the background noise, so if, if, if you just have one person talk at a time, I can hear very clearly. But I can't hear the, the two conversations. They've moved many, many families out of the community. Starting at this, at Burling, all this land, all this vacant land belongs to the Department of Urban Renewal. And it's been slated for a park. We feel that, that we feel fairly strong now that, that all of this should be used for low-income housing. Uh, four people were moved out of this whole section. Yeah. And then make a right what turn. Happened? Did people just double up? Where did they go? They went deeper into the ghettos or, or out of the city altogether. That's the whole problem. The I ghettos just, become they, denser and I denser. I but I, I just I wondered if you knew where if you knew where they went at all. Right turn. And that, yeah, we'll go straight down Larrabee. Now all the way to North Avenue. Mr. Fuller was asking where do the poor people go, those who have been displaced. Any any track of them at all? Well yeah, they push more into slums. Some are moving north from here, some are moving west. Uh, but every area that they're moving, urban removal is going into that area also. So they're eventually they're gonna be pushed out again. Some of the people that were living here have been already pushed out four times. Okay, land on both sides of Larrabee Street, that's the street we're on, have, has been slated for middle income housing. This land and this land. That's, it's going to people uh, who make $12,000 a year. East of here, the area has been entirely rehabilitated. Almost all the families are out. We have some, some information that, that, that the schools have had their population halved because families are moved out. And they're filled with uh, young executives and people who, make, people who can make money. Land values have gone up, rents have gone up, and obviously it's all been done to make dough for those who own. That's really not the problem. And the, the problem, essentially, is that the people who are here now need to be stabilized. They want to be stabilized. Well, they want to stay where they're at and grow where they are. And the, they're not going to be allowed to unless we do something about it. This area right here, there were many, many Puerto Ricans living in this community right here. And Puerto Ricans have been pushed out of Puerto Rico. They've been forced to come to the United States. And when they come to the United States, they've been forced out of their homes here also. There are also a lot of black people who live um, on these blocks on Larrabee Street. Black people that lived in these blocks yeah, on Larrabee yeah. Street. You know, as you tell me, Bucky, uh, Chacha, him and his family, <clears throat> how many times his family has been displaced? How many times in the last uh, years your family? They've been displaced four times. Now they're living out of the city. They were forced to move out. Many, many families have been moved yeah, many have... more times than that. There's one, one family with nine kids that we know that, that was has been forced to move eight times in nine years. By urban to, renewal or yeah, speculators. They've had to uproot, uproot their whole, their kids, take them to a new school each of these times. Now, areas like this have been scheduled for commercial development, yeah. shopping centers, large shopping centers. In a sense, you know, we, uh, as, 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 as you know, we explore together, <laughs> come up against, and, and 
man, man being very ignorant, he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. He's, 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 not, he's often not as bad as he's just ignorant. He doesn't know, and, and it, it, it keeps taking the easiest way. So I, I really like to, to explore with you what, what, we, what we may be able to do. What we're seeing, of course, is rubble at this moment. Mm -hmm. It used to be a gypsy community, you know. I mean, people from. Make a left on. Uh, on well, where did you think? Where did they go? The the gypsies, well, the church. A lot of them are, are a little further north. I guess some have gone back. They have uh, they, some ghettos in Detroit. I know. I used to go to school with some of them right here in the school, left, Newberry. Left. The challenge is not new to me. I've been thinking yeah, about this I for know. an awful long time, <laughs> and. Uh, I, I care very greatly. And what, what I committed to is to try to see what can we do really, really to make things work. And, and I, I find perhaps almost none of the standards of yesterday. You talk about all the zonings and the laws. And, uh, well, oh, these go, go back to just a, a man with a sword taking over and saying, this land is mine. And then you have a series of deeds and there's there, an, 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 an illiterate man doing it. And, and a very ignorant humanity of the time, and, and we have humanity really very, very innocent, but but uh, really very fantastically ignorant. But also, it, it, getting with a sword and playing a game to bluff, it gets to be also full of show off, and, uh, and, and it try, tries to stick to stick to those things. But uh, what, what I really try to get, I want to find out how how can we make things work. <laughs> And, and, and I'm, I'm not interested in knocking somebody down, I'm interested in p picking the people up. <laughs> this, is essentially a, this is essentially a black neighborhood. This is a black slum. As, as miserable as a, a building is, if it's protected against weather, I'd like to do something with it. I, I don't want to just knock it down. I don't look, I don't look at hum, humbleness doesn't mean a thing. Uh, if we could, if we can make some of these things work, they, they, I don't, I don't like it. They're, they're fire traps, and they are fire traps. But if you're behaving well around a fire trap, it doesn't get on fire. <laughs> so that you, you can, you can be uh, become master of your, of your situation. If we, but I, I, I try to get out, and I will talk to you. What I, what I find to be really, I think, are the key, the levers, the things we have to really do. I think we should just go up Sheffield when you hit it, go north on Sheffield. This land was, was developed in the very early days because of the need for workers in the factories which developed along the river. And all these houses came, they were, they were cold water flats originally. People brought their own stoves, cooking and... and uh, Did you live around here once, Bucky? Oh, yeah. In this area? Sure. You lived in this area? Yeah. Back in the 20s. In the 20s. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How would you describe the change? Well, I, you know, I, I, I always thought it was, you know, very humble, to put it simply. And uh, it's been allowed to deteriorate much more. You know, there was paint. <laughs> Things are... But uh, it, it never smelled very good to me. You know? It was wrong. It was an inadequate solution always of life. I, I was I was resented company houses. You know, that's accommodation of, of people to be workers. You say company houses. Yeah, this really amounts it amounted to what you call company houses when you when you get uh, some equipment for the people you're going to. Work. Most, most of our cities built that way, the brownstones or whatever it is, uh, row houses were, were, were company houses. The, the, people did, the people didn't build them that way, they didn't plan it. It was uh, how, to, how to get the space for workers. Right, right, right. <laughs> Past my old house. <laughs> you live on Bissell once, Chachi? I used to live in 2100 block of Bissell, and you're gonna see it, the change. It's all owned by one person, I think. <laughs> so they remodeled the houses, you know. But they forget to talk, tell about the people that they push out. Like it's almost almost about 40 years ago, 45 years ago, you lived in this community. That is right. <coughs> Getting 
pretty close to half a century. Half a century. Well, this was, this black right here was southern white and it started to get Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican people. The conditions which I think are awful and the fundamentals of it are awful. And, and the wonderful human beings. <laughs> Why don't we go up to Webster? This building on the corner here used to rent for about $75 a month for a and It's now renting right for $375. This building. Can you hear that, Bucky? Yeah, I hear it. Yeah. Because it doesn't. Oh, so simply means that the, the, the dollars are not worth anything. <laughs> this, is, this is the block where I'm from. Where I, This is the last place that my family was pushed out of, right here. This was our house right here. It's all remodeled. Yeah. So the rents of this building, of these buildings, this block on Sky High now. They're probably about two hundred dollars a month or something like that. About five times what they were yeah. before. Maybe like eighty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Simply means that if, if you if you if you've been able to to get a job and were able to save anything at all, you you divided your money by six. Very savings. All, all the people who are, who, are, who are doing what was supposed to be very worthy, good, hard working man saving his money, his, 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 his savings have been reduced. To so he has to go right to work in the country town. And, and, and he's lost his security job and he can't get a job because they call him an old man. So he's, he's, he's almost a hopeless position. Looks like they're coming back from church. The point Bucky just raised about the man, isn't this true also? Small homeowners are also being hit hard. Small landlords. Yeah, they they, small they save their money, and, and, uh, but then now and they, they get to the point where they're retired, they lose their job, they force them to retire, and they can't, they can't, they can't uh, live on what they have because their money's only worth one sixth what it was before. Some of the kinds of things that Urban Renewal has done is, you know, a year or so, so before they even buy the building from the local landowner, they'll write to the tenants and say this is a demolition area move and so the tenants move out the and landlord can't re left again it, Sean. and they lose their building you know goes to the bank because they can't pay their make their mortgage payments you know a lot of them haven't paid off some of their buildings yet this is a Puerto Rican we discuss about urban renewal it's a very complex form of uh, rationalization immorality and everything else so there's no use in the, trying to pick any one part of it apart it's just yeah, all wrong it's all right, wrong <laughs> it also tends to make this area another suburb. Their whole, their whole viewpoint is about, about 80 years old. What they consider to be fine is a kind of very expensive restoration, where I, probably not the answer to the problem at all. We really need a new way of building is what we need. But their attitude is, is suburban. We want our little house and we want our fence around it. We don't want anybody to violate our area. We want to, we want to enclose all our things they don't have very much understanding that there are more and that there's more in the world than the things that one possesses. Right. It's Christmas time right now, and you can uh, see some. Let's go on up and, and start. How did you describe the, Bucky? How did you describe urban renewal just then? What did you say? Uh, you were saying about urban renewal. How did yeah. you describe it? I just said then? it's a it's a complex a rationalization of immorality. Of immorality. <laughs> that uh, no use in really trying to discuss any one part of it. It's part of a great cancer. And it gets into a, a sort of an abstraction, you see, where it doesn't seem to be any one person, so therefore you can sort of, you can get this abstraction to, to, do, to do some immoral things that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the human beings don't seem to be, who are managing, don't seem to be involved. It gets to be fancy, very fancy words, you know. It's just some sounds. And, and to cover all kinds of evil. On the other hand, I want you, well, as you talk with me and, and they get to know me at all, I really discover I can't do much good thinking if I begin to put packages in what I call evil and good and bad. I've got to really try to find out what is going on first. And I find even even the, the people who seem to be the, the, the worst people, <laughs> most offensive, I realize that they they couldn't be that offensive. They weren't really very ignorant. They, they, they really, in a sense, they're almost innocent of how terrible they are. <laughs> That's one, one, of, one of the reasons so, so why. I, I know I couldn't get anywhere trying to reform this man, say, you're a very evil man. He's, so I don't know, he won't admit he's an evil man. 
<laughs> so you don't get anywhere by doing that. In order, uh, and I, I want to find out where the forces are operating here because I find there are things that are going on in nature where one man, he, uh, you know, there has to be some kind of a negative or positive function and this, this character suddenly gets to be the negative, negative. <laughs> And he didn't really necessarily mean to be so at all, but then he fills in and then he begins to be consistent with that function. I, I'd hate to be that character, to be the negative. But uh, I, I understand, I, I can, I can, if I understand what's really going on, you'll get to know me a little better. We can get that, those negatives out of, out of the way, not as human beings, but really get the things attended to. So it's forces you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, forces. Yeah, really are talking about forces where characters begin to perform the f function of the force. And then they seem to be awful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, the university itself has moved out over about 400 families and will move out about 500. Uh, it's the major institution that brought uh, urban renewal to the area and it had two acres before urban renewal came. It will have 63 when the urban renewal process is completed. Uh, Mayor Daly graduated from DePaul and so forth, so there are a lot of political strings but it's a, this is their main building. What academic center meaning what? Academic center? <laughs> it means academic. <laughs> no, Studs that, you know, we talk about this half century since I was here. What I, I saw half a century ago was that this was just to be a way it was going to go. And that's what really, Made, made me get going. Uh, at that time, people did not, uh, they, there was no, uh, if they, they may be an uncomfortable so forth, but everybody was taking everything for granted, and that's the way it always was and always would be. Uh, they you say people were taking old, it for granted. Times. That's the way it always was, always would be. Yeah, yeah. And what you saw wasn't good, then I, you saw that. I, I saw it wouldn't, that, that, that kind of an equilibrium would not last at all. It would not go along with, with education and, and knowledge. You know, it was only true because Chicago didn't even know about any place else. <laughs> this is before the Lindbergh flight. Yeah. The radio was just coming in, and everybody talked about things absolutely just in terms of the very local situation. That's all you knew about, and you suppose that you suppose that's where it was. You didn't know it could be any better. So they didn't know it could be changed. They didn't know they themselves could change it either. No. Never dreamed. We didn't have like refrigeration. Uh -huh. Didn't have to anything like that. Mm -hmm. no, nobody knew you could really order those. So in a way, what you're saying earlier about the ignorance, you know, yeah, 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 even of yeah. those forces as well yeah. as power, yeah. power and ignorance together. Then. Both, both, the power structure and the, mm -hmm. the people were all ignorant. You were saying about the ignorance and power together, you know. So when he lived here, uh, I should describe, we're sitting on the bus and Buckminster Fuller is being taken around this whole area, like the park area by the people. And 40 years ago, he said he saw this coming. Really, 50 years ago. 50 years so ago. It's, 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 and it was the acceptance, the point, it's interesting, you, you, people accepted it. I saw that, as we, no, you had general illiteracy. The men, I, I had been lucky to go to college and I had a vocabulary that went along with, with the books and, 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 and college. And the workmen that I worked with everywhere, who were, they get like because I was a kid and I really wanted to learn, and, I, and so they begin to trust you. But uh, their own vocabulary, they, they had not, not more than 100 words. Half of those were, were just a, a blasphemy. And they that didn't mean they didn't have wonderful intellect. They didn't, they didn't have tools. They had beautiful tools for their hands to work with. They handled them beautifully, but they didn't have the word tools. And and this is not changed through the school system, it's changed by the radio. Radio brought, because the guys who got jobs in the radio got them by, by getting vocabulary too, and could talk. And this brought, and, they, and these people are full of intelligence, and they, and they got those word tools. And they, I realized that this, by this way, man was going to gradually begin to learn something about the whole world. But at that time, he really was, he was pure Chicago. He was just, he was just this part of Chicago, you know, about any rest of the world, and this, this way he thought it was, and the way it always would be. So he just let it go. But I saw that as he began to know, know better, uh, evolution had other, other intentions other than the human beings around. 
and, and th 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 this kind of thing that we see here today would, would come about very rapidly as people began to really uh, get some knowledge. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you, you can't really understand things and, and ratio things and realize till you realize that they, they really are higher potentials. So gradually we have, out of this mess, uh, the technology has made it possible for more people to have higher standard living. We have uh, really the people who, that you, you know, you kind of feel badly about. You, you talk about they today and, and, and they want a little house like that. It's because they, they'd been without, this is the characters had been without for, Generations and they and they'd seen the person who seemed to be successful had a had a castle and his gra ground around so so the first thing they want is kind of that symbol of it so you have the people who are first getting benefited getting out of the mess going for those symbols <laughs> very ignorantly too uh, I, I I I I can't get anywhere by just blaming the the individuals who as they get a chance to get out of a mess begin to get somewhere because we go back another couple of centuries and 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 things were really hell. <laughs> But 150 years ago in England, the law said that if a man was caught uh, killing a rabbit or chopping down a tree, he could be hung on the spot without trial. The, the power of, of, the, of the man, the ignorant man with the saw, the top man, tough guy, with his, his, his character, said, all the, all the animals belong to me. And you people eat roots. <laughs> and, and that's only 150 years ago. So these changes are coming, coming very, very rapidly, and the main thing is to try to understand what, if we can, as much as we can, about what really is out there in, in nature to be used, and see how we'll handle it, and, and not stay too preoccupied with, with, and don't waste your time because we have too little time to get something really done. Too much with the negatives of how this character is, is a bad character and so forth. And I, I, I had to learn. I had to learn. I just wouldn't get anywhere. And letting my passion get get the way. If you get angry, you, you don't think. And we, we got to think. We got to really think our way out. And the big change, other big change, you said 40 years ago, 50 years ago, you were here, people accepted. Today, of course, a great many of the poor are not no, accepted. No, nobody's going to accept that. Why cool. should they? It's, 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 now you know better. It's obviously no good. Absolutely not. What do you mean by utopia and oblivion? That's what really Utopia or it, But it, now, it's it's saying, say, now it's got to be success for everybody or for nobody. It's all yeah. over. The last portion of the conversation took place as uh, Buckminster Fuller and the rest of us left the station wagon on this cold winter day, December 14th, 69, and walking toward the church. And now he's inside the office of the church before the meeting begins. This is a meeting that was scheduled, Buckminster Fuller addressing uh, the young lords at that church, Dayton and Armitage, and many of the young people of the community and some older people were gathered there. The boiler wasn't working, so it was very, very cold. <laughs> Picture the scene, if you will, Buckminster Fuller sitting in his overcoat, all of us in the overcoats, quite cold. And this conversation, rather this monologue by Bucky Fuller, took place in the office before the meeting itself began. The microphone is on the table, so the crackling sound you'll occasionally hear is because of the wind blowing in and the nature of technology itself. And he's speaking to about, oh, a dozen or so people seated around, Chacha Jimenez and his colleagues and others, in his overcoat all wrapped up and reminiscing about his beginnings and his birth in New England. I, I was born in, in New England, and when my, my uh, father died when I was very young, my mother had a, a, enough money to, to what we might call middle income, but uh, I was very secure. I wanted a good school, so I was sent to get a good education. I got a good vocabulary and some really very good education in physics and mathematics and things like that. And I was entered for Harvard. And I, I, got, I got in. But I no sooner got in and I really felt very, very unhappy. And, and uh, I, I cut my, my mid-year examinations and, and got kicked out. Went to work and, and became a mechanic and a mill, millwright. And I learned to put up each type of cotton machine. And they, everybody said, or trying to get this boy back into college. College relented, said, come back. And I, in there again, I again felt very unhappy and just got myself out. So that was really the end of my very formal education. I, 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 I was in the, and entered Harvard in the 1913 before World War One. The class that I was in was 700 at Harvard. Only 45 were there for graduation. They, all the rest were off in the war, and a very large number got killed in World War One. There was no GI Bill or anything, so there was no. Uh, so uh, the fact that my class didn't graduate didn't put me in, in a sort of bad standing. My class always felt I was a good 
the, the, my, my, the boys just liked me all right, so I was just considered okay, but I was in trouble with the... Uh, I hadn't carried it on the regular conventional way. But then I, uh, I got... My wife, I was married in, in World War I. Our first child was born in the, just at the end of the war, and she caught the spinal meningitis and infantile paralysis. And it was an awful struggle where I, the kind of pay you had those days were very miserable anyway, but uh, I was working hard and I worked in, I, I got an armor company, I got out of the Navy in an armor company. And uh, it never had really enough to get on and, and so the, with this baby sick and having to have a trained nurse saying, we, we just, we, we just all, always in debt. <laughs> And uh, this child lived to just before her fourth birthday, and she died in uh, uh, November 1922. And I had, at this time, decided to go into the, my, my father-in-law was an architect, and he'd invented a little better way of building with reinforced concrete. And I decided somebody ought to do something with that, so I, I decided to see if I couldn't do something. I got people to get put up money and back the enterprise to try building. In the and then I, this, I, I, our child died just uh, and uh, so for five years I was trying to get this building thing going and and feeling we uh, really uh, horribly sad about this this kid. It seemed awful. I, f I felt that uh, if the kind of technology that went into making a battleship and an airplane and, and guns had gone into how you might take care of environment. I'm sure this child had caught these things out of the environment, and I was sure that there's something wrong about our environment. Uh, you're, you're young, you've got some knowledge of physics, you've learned, I've I learned, I'd become in the Navy, I'd learned how to navigate, I'd use mathematics very powerfully, <laughs> I learned how to calculate. I was sure things were just and not being done in logical ways, and uh, yet very ignorant. Anyway, uh, I got up 240 buildings, small buildings, in different parts of the country when I got this company going. And uh, I had a, a little small manufacturer down in Joliet, Illinois, and got a lot of, a lot of cheap houses up out on the sticks here. But I, it, they were a little better building than they had been going in before, and I felt pretty good about that. I, not, I felt they were good enough to make me drive to try to get something better. But I really didn't understand that, and nobody, nobody else didn't understand really very much about economics. There's nothing to, even they do today. I think we're very ignorant. But by 1927, our, our second child was born, and at that time I lost control of, of this business and, uh, for one reason or another. <laughs> and, uh, I, I was really out, and, it, and the people who had backed me uh, so said I was no good because I didn't make a profit for them. And, and uh, <laughs> I had a, suddenly a new child after after five years uh, going out. That little girl we loved so much and uh, fought very hard to try to save her, and, and she was fantastically beautiful, uh, paralyzed and all, and but it didn't hurt her mind. So I I realized that uh, nature was compensating. And this little child, because she couldn't move around, yet wanted all the information every child does, and wants to investigate and tear things apart, find out how things work, she had to get her information through other people's minds. And she suddenly demonstrated, my wife and I were about to say a sentence. And before you could get it out of your mouth, she would say that sentence with your words. And uh, often the words were not kind of words that she really would use. And you realize that there was some, she was manifesting a capability in humanity that we were not accrediting and not really realizing was there. I'm sure nature hadn't put something else in her, but this was in there and was brought out by the circumstances. I began to have entirely new ideas about humanity having much higher potentials than, than society was granting it. And the idea that because people were poor, that they didn't know anything, that they never would, that they were unintelligent, I saw was a, nothing could be a more stupid kind of an assumption. Uh, all through those years, incidentally, says, uh, I, I really, uh, I, because I get pushed out of this and I didn't have a father and trying to find him my way, I had, like any kid, a compassion for all humanity, living things. And, and 
I, I, I couldn't understand. I thought there were class lines and things like that. I, I, I just didn't think that way about human beings. Human beings are human beings. And I, and I saw and heard people talk on this camp about how, you know, the other one. And then and I heard the other side. Both sides, there was nothing about either side, but neither of them really understood understood the other, and you couldn't, I can understand why they didn't. They didn't. Man was too preoccupied, and they've got some fantastic, the conditioning of our reflexes, so you get to thinking soon, or you don't think. Conditioned reflexes is just the opposite of thinking. I saw that people weren't thinking, they were acting without thinking. And uh, anyway, when this new child was born, I said, I, I've got a chance now to be, to look out for this new life, and I'm going to have to really rethink everything I have, and that was, this is 1927 in, uh, in Chicago here, and uh, I had absolutely no money. And suddenly, this new new child and 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 the, and the wonderful wife who just, uh, you know, depending on my doing some kind of thinking, I said, I'm going to really have to to do some real thinking. <laughs> and I began to be interested in. I said, either I better get myself out of the way because I make messes of things, and and less let. Some families look out for you know, loving families that look out for the wife and kids, or else I'm going to really have to try to to, to do something that is really worthwhile. And, and I, uh, I really committed myself in 1927 to to try, uh, uh, never doing. I said, if my this new child it has the kind of promise that I saw glimpses of in the first child, <laughs> telling me something about all new life. Uh, she wouldn't like it if I spent the rest of my time getting her special advantage in an ignorant world <laughs> where there's nowhere nearly enough for everybody. She, she would not enjoy my having spent my time to gain advantage for her. If she's the kind of child I think she could be and that children could be, she, she'd be happy and love me much more if, if I have given myself to trying to, to make the circumstances of everybody better and that she found herself in a world that's working a little bit better. And that's what, so I, I really committed myself completely that way. And uh, I said, you, you, yeah. people, everybody tells you you got to earn a living. I said, I think this is an absolute blinding thing. I said, um, you have to, I'm either going to say you go out to make money or you're going to make sense. <laughs> you really, so I forget money forever. <laughs> and, uh, and I have done that. It, it, it is interesting that for a very long time I didn't have any, but uh, I said, what a, what can the individual do? What can the individual do for his fellow man <laughs> without trespassing on his fellow man, taking taking anything away from him? What can he do for for his fellow man? And what can he do starting uh, without any money? How can he how how can you take the initiative on behalf of your fellow man in view of the massive advantage of the great corporation, the great states, the great organizations like churches and things? Uh, what can you do? Well, I, I saw, well, there's things the individual could do that a, uh, that a bureaucracy couldn't do. <laughs> it is too heavy. Uh, you can make decisions in a hurry. If you really find out what works, you, you can commit yourself to that, never, never mind what anybody says. It's trying to find out what the levers are. Well, that's the way I started organizing myself in 27, and uh, I had to learn how to get on without being dependent on anybody, have anybody tell me what to do, and how how to see what I could find out, what to do. But it certainly meant understanding that the self, that I'm only a guinea pig. I have, I'm a piece of machinery that's available to me. Uh, but I, I don't, and, and it's, uh, my interest in me is only to see how the machinery works and not because I'm trying to get something from myself. And uh, I'd say that uh, I, I have made some discoveries. It's a very amazing thing. I have really made some good scientific discoveries and mathematical discoveries that, that I find society doesn't realize how, how mu much those, those principles that you're discovering can mean to, to man, but they, they are the difference between this really remaining in ignorance and, and great pain and dying very early, and whether you really might, we might, uh, what I began to see was that man was, was so fearful, he lived in such ignorance, he was so fearful. He did uh, some, almost all the things he did in fear, protecting his position, whatever he did have. Uh, or so his property. Uh, or his but, property. Well, the property was part of, of his, it was an ignorant way of trying to protect himself. So he, he goes out with it. Uh, with, he's, a, he's the toughest guy around, and he gets a hold of his bludgeon and says, anybody say, I'm not, this is my property here. 
That's the way you stop promptly. Just by saying, anybody that says no, I, I can lick them. That's, that was, there was no other validity to property. It's been what we call sovereign claims. It's just claimed in the, in the strong man. There's nothing in nature that says that property belongs to anybody. So that uh, I saw that that was a fiction and uh, imposed by uh, the, the, the strong man himself in great fear of some other strong man putting him down. And uh, I said, that's, we can't get anywhere on on fear basis and all the all the things we've done. We're going to have to forget about the fear and let's really try to find out what's going on in our universe. Uh, are there principles operating here that would make it possible if you really caught on what they are? I had learned then how, as a sailor how to how to build a boat that didn't go to the bottom. <laughs> I could get across in a bad storm. And I learned how you could use the wind to, to get you from here to there. So I began to say, how do I use the forces that are going on? What are, what's going on in my universe? How do I use those things to, to highest advantage for the most people? And what principles are operating? And, and I have really learned quite a lot, such. But uh, I don't want to, uh, I, I would like to give a, a, a coherent kind of a talk. <laughs> In, and, and I'd like not to uh, sort of pull the plug on what you might be able to do in the way of talking. Really, because you are here and, and you're... you know, no, I, think and, and I have been in this area no, I think and lived here. a small meeting before the big public one, so perhaps, you know, isn't that what you had in mind, Cha-Cha? Yeah. Uh, people asking questions yeah, generally? Yeah. yeah. Talking. Think about the, uh, the what you saw on the car, the trip that yeah. you took a moment ago with Cha Cha and everybody else. You know what you saw. You lived here 45 years ago. Yeah. I but did. you sensed this was going to be this way. The forces were at work. Yeah. Forces of ignorance, you say. Yeah. I saw that uh, when I came in here it was before the Lindbergh flight. It was in the first little. We we had the first radio sets around 1922, and and uh, there was. There were people, people, uh, the talkie, talkie was just beginning, which meant people getting information uh, from a distance. And back in that, those days, I saw that man would get to learn and would learn better, and he would begin to know about his total world, and, and he doesn't yet know very much about it, it is the actual fact. Television is and doing the same thing now. Television is doing will... very much more, because it, it compounds the view, viewing as well as the, as the w words, the vocabulary. Could you comp do you have any thoughts on what a community might be able to do to sustain itself, to, to become um, decentralized from the power structure so that it might have some say-so about, in a natural way, how it wants to grow and develop this neighborhood, for example, because it's, it's a perfect time for this now. What are your thoughts with respect to that? Let me say it. Quick, there are media things you do. They're a little longer distance, and they're quite long, very long distance. And it's a very good idea to be able to serve all those, and not just say you work for the long distance, be a perfectionist, or anything. what do you do? Run, run for one for step by step. And because I'll say one thing doesn't mean I don't want to work on the longer one, because it, it, this will be always the, the quick things are palliatives. So you've got to stop the wound from <laughs> bleeding. What it is. And because you stop up the blood uh, in any kind of a tourniquet doesn't mean that's the ki best kind of way to carry on at all. So the, the things I say about what I think you could do first uh, will not be the long distance thing. Chacha was thinking perhaps we could uh, say like some of this, what you're saying now, Bucky, obviously it sounds to me like more should hear it, you know, would you yeah, think so? It could, could be the part of a public it. meeting too? You know, what do you think? What are you going to suggest, Chacha? I think we should go upstairs and see the slides. And Chad, perhaps we could see the slides now, or, or do you want that for the public? Oh, I'd like to do the slides with the, with the public. I thought well, that would be nice. Yeah. Public meetings. Yeah. So, how, how long will we will we have upstairs for the public? As long as you want. Mm -hmm. We get all late. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to talk. He likes to talk. He talks. And is it also? Uh, well, I, I suppose will be. If there are questions, that's all right too. Of course, sure. So in the meantime, what do you suggest just what we're doing yeah, now? Right, huh? we These, right now, we really can only kind of just get to know each other, and you can really find out how I feel about things. And, and I, would, I would really like to be useful to you. I'd like to, I mean, I've been, I'm 75 now, I don't have much time more that you can really count on being useful. I really like to give you everything I got. <laughs> so that if you can 
find out enough about me so it makes it easier for you to listen good and uh, clearly and not think that I'm, uh, I'm that I, you must realize I'm an explorer all the time trying to find out. I, I don't think I know it all at all, but I've learned how to organize myself to find out things. Did you have a lot of opposition when you began? A lot of opposition to you when you began? Oh, uh, uh, wasn't uh, even that that started to be paying attention. <laughs> 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 then opposition did begin. It, it, it always came because people were afraid. They thought they felt their jobs were insecure. <laughs> Kids began to ask me to come to schools and talk, and, and uh, the, immediately the professor, immediately I go away, the professor began to talk against that because they, they felt very insecure. It's the kind of things I really talk as we explore, you know, you may not really I don't think our present educational system is a even mildly. Uh, uh, it really, uh, incidentally, when I talk about things, things that are that and really no, they're obsolete now. Did have a value yesterday. I, I don't think the umbilical cord is no good, but it, it's very good while the baby's in the womb. But when it's, when it's out of the womb, they don't want the umbilical cord anymore. So, uh, I, I don't. Uh, I don't like to be stupid about umbilical cords. <laughs> they're, they're very very important. <laughs> So the things that ha happen in the evolution of man, I don't disdain them because they're n now obsolete. <laughs> in fact, I, I really want to know just why, how valid they were. And I think you've you got to appreciate all right across the board if you really find out what, they, what, the, tr what the truths are. So I don't have a sort of uh, a different kind of worlds of the past and tomorrow, so it's all one. <laughs> it's been fantastic, this history of man, starting utterly I ignorant. And, and finding something out, and he is finding out. And this is this is a, this is a very wonderful moment, really, with with all the pains. It's a very wonderful moment. It's a fantastic moment, it's, it's, and uh, I'm, all the messes that that we hear. It's just great because when I was young, I was afraid that this can never get out in the open. I said I lived across all the tracks, <laughs> and I I couldn't see how you could ever get one side or the other side because people felt so much so biased ever listen to the other side. The things are really getting loose. Once they're out in the open, I'm sure they're going to get, they're going to really get solved. This is, this is a great promise. So really, the worse the mess seems to be, the, the more, uh, more uh, confidence I have now that we really may get somewhere. I, uh, very, I, I, I respect my fellow man uh, all around. And I, I don't really find many, many uh, real devils. And even ones that seem to be a devil. <laughs> I, I, know, I, I find out how he got there, the circumstances that got this poor character into this mess. He doesn't know how to untie himself. And he's meant to do his kind of fighting and his thoughtless, whatever it may be. I, I can see how he got there, too. <laughs> so I, I don't spend any of my time really thinking about those things as negative. Also, I'm confident from my own experience, you, you've got to learn to think <laughs> that we do have a very extraordinary faculty, but that we don't often do it. <laughs> it's very easy to get into, into the cliché and, uh, and uh, the rule that seems to work and, and to, to go along with the crowd. It's gotten easier than to have to hold up the crowd and say, that may, that may not be so for the following reason. People say, you're giving me this argument, why should you behave? And, I, I don't go along with any of the religions, and I find really the ideologies are inadequate. I'm, Mar Karl Marx was a scientist, and I'm perfectly sure that Karl Marx was alive today. He would, uh, he would uh, make a, have very different strategies from the, the strategies he had to have at that time, which was kind of umbilical cord time, is no longer appropriate. Yet the, the, the party dogma, I guess, where you don't, you're not supposed to do anything, you're supposed to go back to it, it gets to be like a religion again. And I, I find that I see the Russians, I'm very persona grata in Russia, and, and they, they treat me extraordinarily well, and they use my buildings and things. And, and, and uh, I, I find men in powerful positions able as a scientist to think about science, but then he, he, because the party says oh, he's not supposed to think about these other things, he, and I suddenly find a very good thinking man in, as a scientist going over just saying things that are out of the rule book and refusing to think that. But, Recently, I, I've been in meetings with the Russians, uh, there's meetings between America and Russia in, in, in small groups. That the last one I was at, this, uh, in last March, 
I suddenly realized that I was talking to some Russians who could think, and these were the, the, editor, the editor of Pravda and, and, the, uh, and the foreign news editor of Pravda. And, and I saw these older men who had been really very dogmatic. These are, these are quite young men, there, Pravda, and, and they would suddenly say something, and, and it, was, it was not like the old rules at all. And, and nobody was saying that those boys didn't have the right to do that thing. And they were doing some original thinking, so this gave me some real hope out of coming out of, out of the dogma in Russia. But, it takes some very strong characters to be able to break out of, out of the dogma and dare, dare to think and, and expose yourself and, and finally get everybody to realize that is really so. The, 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 change, the evolution is always here. Change is always going on there. The scenario does not repeat itself, and you've got to learn how to get on with it to understand that there's really change. And right, uh, I, 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 in, the, in the 30s, the Great Depression, I began gradually having made up my mind to do what I told you what I was going to do, to, uh, I began to meet, <coughs> meet intelligent people who began to listen to me. And, they, and, they were, and I'd find very good thinkers. But all of a sudden, I found my thinker friend <laughs> stop the kind of conversation. I could see he wasn't thinking anymore. And he, he suddenly was on because he joined the party. And when he joined the party, they didn't allow him to think anymore. <laughs> and, and so he wanted to be good and loyal. And, and it was really kind of a painful thing to realize that because uh, I, I think this was a chance to possibly move society much further than the old dogma. There's no question about the good intentions of the dogma. It's highly, uh, fantastically idealistic. So, at any rate, I've, I've had to learn how to get on without depending on any uh, corporate backing or any... The, the, I had to, how, how do you go it alone? Not, to, not for my sake, but simply for the val value to society of having somebody stay independent and keep thinking. Decision that you were going to. Thirty-two. I'm now, I'm now seventy-five. So I've been at it for quite a while, and, and I'm learning. I'm learning a little. <laughs> I don't know much. More. I think the more you learn, the more you learn how really little man really knows. But the little I know, I'm feeling fairly confident about. It's interesting, Bucky. You, when you lived here forty-five years ago, you said people accept it. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to yeah, be. Yeah. Now you sense a difference. Oh, for example, here <coughs> absolutely. In the church, people, themselves, people themselves saying it doesn't have to be. No, it does not have to be. I saw it didn't have to be then, but I saw that it'd be an awful long time before society would begin to feel that way. But and it would not come out of out of any book or any dogma. It would come out come out of the information which is coming out of the new tools like the radio and, and the television. That was the thing really driving us. How do we really use those tools? How do we use the refrigeration so the food doesn't spoil? Get really get to some mouths. How about in can, in terms of this area, where, where you know it, it's really a, a matter of survival for especially right. for yeah. poor people, and, and people have been trying with little bits of success, but a lot of failures uh, to to fight against this, and you know that's why we wanted to show you. The I would say that, that I will I I would wager that if you really do think and do some, some inte very, really intelligent things as, as step, the steps that have to be done. If you do them intelligently, uh, all of society knows it's a mess. I mean, the, the, the power structure doesn't feel powerful anymore at all. And if you do something <coughs> really intelligent and logical, you, despite all the stupid laws and, and the secondary, uh, secondary conventions that have been developed, uh, they, will, they will be completely waived. <laughs> In other words, I think, I think what you're just putting up the little dome out there, which does do more with less, and, they, and it feels good to the kids, is a, uh, that's not going to be taken out. I, I, think, I, think, you, I think you really can, can build right here in this mess. Don't I don't want you to have to always have to make do. <laughs> so I said there are different stages. But I think each thing that you do can, can uh, I think you can... The, the, the society is full of this horrible thing, fear, and when it's fearful, it gets panicky and does stupid things. So I think do things that don't, don't just to defy and make people fearful, but to, to give them some confidence. I think if, if what you really want to do is be constructive, <coughs> so if you want to be constructive, do things that uh, do not uh, invite opposition, uh, that sort of gradually begin to win, uh, win, uh, win, uh, win the support, even though it's very absolutely new, new solution. You you were going to uh, start talking about the three stages that yeah. you saw, like for a neighborhood yeah. like this. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about those? 
Yeah, I still seem to think that it, it what do you think? That, that's something for the to do public with meetings. Oh, well, you were going to do that with the big group? Both. It's, you don't mind, but here, uh, Chuck, you don't mind, like some of the stuff you were saying is quite beautiful. Uh, you won't mind about repeating it up there. I mean, because no, I think they no, should hear that, no. you know, right. the great many well, we, Now, we, we were, I, I, let, me, let me point out, because I've been, uh, uh, what I went out way back at 27 was, all I know things were in a mess. Uh, and then we're going to be a much worse mess, and I felt that society was was ignorantly uh, on the brink of, uh, of extinction or some success. And I didn't. And I began to feel for what what are the things that c you can do. I said, uh, what can the individual do, and what what really needs to be done in the very biggest way. Well, I found that I I couldn't improve an airplane very much, and I'm not going to improve the electronics very much. They, they, there are a great many pe people preoccupied with that. But so where man was living and so forth, he was really very ignorant. And uh, so I didn't get into the into building simply because I, I, I hadn't trained to be an architect or anything. I got there because I saw that's the thing, it's where people live that need attention, which is just all we're talking about right now. And I saw that the, the way in which we built was very, very ignorant. <laughs> Now I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you upstairs in several ways. It'd be very convincing. To, uh, to give you a big, a big understanding of that, when you build a boat, it's got to float. You don't build a boat of stone. <laughs> and, and, you, and Archimedes found about this principle of displacement that whatever the volume of water you're going, the size of your boat, that much water, <laughs> what that water weighs is all the boat can float. It's a displacement. So you learn to do a whole lot with little. It's got to be strong enough not to sink. It's got to be strong enough to carry a cargo. It's got to do all those things. You want to have some power to drive it. All those, you're adding in weight. So you put in weight <laughs> with great care. So you do everything on a performance per pound basis. <laughs> performance per time and per amount of energy. So that, uh, building an airplane, everybody knows what the ships weigh. That's, uh, that's a, the Queen Mary is 85,000 tons. I probably know what a 707 plane weighs. But if you ask him what a house weighs, nobody knows. And, uh, you, I, I've asked the architects, I've been invited to speak to the architects of every, every country in this world. <coughs> I asked the architects of the association, I'm, I said, Will anybody tell me what the building we're in weighs? They never have any idea. If you don't know what a building weighs, then you're certainly not working on performance per pound. So I saw that. The world of building on the land was very different from the sea and the sky. That, that you was very, so I saw, why was the difference? Because man used to build fortresses. And the heavier and higher, the thicker the walls, the more secure he felt. And he just really worked on an ignorant basis. So I saw building, uh, a man's doing, that's just exactly the wrong thing. So a house, then some people think of a house as a fortress, yes, rather than yes. a place to live. They're still thinking on the fear basis as fear. fortress. Yeah. The, the bigger the bank account, the bigger the, the uh, grocery stack, <laughs> you, you do big with big for security, instead of, and the sea was just like, how do you do more with little? <laughs> and they are very severely more that way. So I said, I'm going, to, I'm going to see what happens if I will take the kind of technology that's gone in the sea and the sky and apply it over to the land. I just to tell you that, that, that those basics are approaching now. I just, the building we have then is, is part of, of the, uh, the wrong, awkward way of doing where the whole tradition of it comes out of, of, a, of a strong man with the prisoners, and he, and he builds a fortress. I mean, Italy looks very beautiful, all that architecture, but every stone was laid by a prisoner. And he died damn young, and it was great pain. So it isn't so pretty when you get to know how he got it. And you can't have that kind of building except with... Uh, and the only, all the buildings are built here. Were, uh, were a, a carpenter was lucky if he got a dollar a day. And, and he couldn't live with it. So, the, the, so there's nothing good about this kind of building anywhere. And if something was done really by perforce, uh, so if you really were to try to make it right, one reason these buildings get to cost so much now is because uh, labor, labor unions at least got, got out and got, got the guy a, a decent wage. <laughs> and when he gets a decent wage, the building just that kind of building you can't afford it. <laughs> so it's out. You it's, it's, it's all through. That kind of building is all through it historically, and it became uh, the time of the great crash in 27, 29. It was because the building was already so incompatible with the newer kind of technologies, 
And at that time, the government took it over. <laughs> and when the banks were all closing, because they closed, so they had the mortgages on the buildings. The buildings weren't worth anything. So the government took the, over the underlying mortgage. And since that time, we have really then, during the 40, uh, 45 years of government underwriting utter inefficiency in building. And, and gradually, man getting proper wages and, and getting it so it becomes absolutely impossible. Where you had to get a 40-year mortgage. You know, when Buckminster Fuller starts talking, you probably get caught up, and it's marvelous. Now we've got to say this. We don't want to leave it in the gym. Right. You know that phrase, we don't want to leave it in the gym? <laughs> right. So right. It's right. great. So could we you suggest we go up? It's good. It's for our clock, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> We're not on. Studs, are you in there? Can I? Can that gentleman hear? How are you? That was a charming <laughs> evening. I'll wait a second. He'll be bringing something down. Hey, Lawrence, thanks to you. Thanks beautiful. To you. No, beautiful. Great right. 30G. Hello. 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 Milton Babbitt, the composer. Oh, oh, how are you doing, I'm very happy to meet you. I'm happy you. to meet you. I'm I hope your book is selling I, well. I, well, from what I gather, I'm very delighted you're here. I didn't know so distinguished a visitor. You're very kind. I, I was told about you only after you ran through the room, so I decided not to interrupt oh, you. Oh, no, no. This is Buckminster Fuller talking to I young heard, lords. I... And it's a very marvelous experience. It was cold. I mean, and he...